Hi, this is Shannon from SIS for Teachers. Today we're gonna to be talking about multiplication, but we're not gonna be talking about multiplication with whole numbers, we're gonna be looking at it with fractions. As we start to look at understanding what we're doing in fractions, we wanna look at how we understand multiplication first in whole numbers. What does this statement mean, five times six? Some might think that it means multiply, some might mean say that it's times, some might just tell me that it, the answer is 30. But we want to know more what does this statement mean. It means five groups of six. So if we look at five groups of six, we know that if we made an array of five groups of six, it would look one way. If we changed it around to make it six groups of five, it would still be the total of 30, but the groups would look differently. Let's talk about it in a higher number. Let's look at 89 times 12. What does this mean? This means 89 groups of 12. So if we keep that in mind as we start to learn more about how to multiply fractions and take what we already have learned in multiplication, it will help us to apply what we're doing in the multiplication of fractions. Let's first kind of take it with a whole number. If I were to put a fraction um, statement up here where I might put four times one half, what does four times one half mean? It means four, groups of half or four halves. We're gonna use pattern blocks to kind of model this today. So if I have the hexagon, we're gonna have that equal one whole. Our trapezoid is going to be equal to one half as two of these will fit on the whole. Our rhombus is going to represent one third because if we put this unit fraction on top, it will make it thirds. And then the triangle obviously would be six. As we look at this, we've kind of posted the unit fractions that we might want to use to help us while we're trying to conceptually understand what fractions are asking. So if this wants to know four halves, we're going to pull down the four halves. So we have one group, two groups, three, and then four. When we total this, we want to figure out how much is it related to the whole that we're talking about. We can lay on top the hexagon on top of the trapezoids to see that when we have four halves, we note that it's equal to two. Let's try it with another pattern block to see if we can do the same thing. Let's try to do three groups of one third. So we're gonna use the thirds, which is going to be our rhombus. And so I'm gonna pull out one rhombus, two, three. I have three groups of these individual one-thirds. When I look at how much that totals, I can put this on top and it tells me that it's equal to one whole. As we look at looking at fractions, it's important to be able to show it within unit fractions and also be able to change it. So for our last problem, we're gonna show four groups of, let's do two six. So now if I wanna think of what are the groups? You know, when kids are kind of looking at this, they first might wanna think of that they're kind of back to what they were doing when they were originally learning how to do multiplication. I have to come up with four groups. Each group needs to have two sixths in it. I know this is equal to one sixth, so I'm going to put two sixths in one group. There's my second one. Here's my third and now I'm gonna have four. So I can check to see, do I have four groups? Yes, indeed. So as I start to put these together, I can start to see how many I have as I look at this. So if I kind of erase these circles that we were using with the groups, because now we know we have exactly four groups of two sixths, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my groups kind of together to show it as I'm looking at the whole. We're gonna kind of talk about how these pattern blocks can really help students and help really conceptualize what we're doing. So I know that I have six, seven, eight. When I put this together, I know that it's equal to one. So I know that it, all of those totaled at least one, but I have a little bit more left. So one way I could put this is I could put the answer as one and two six. But if we wanted to reduce that into its simplest form, we have a piece that will fit right on top, which also tells us this also could equal one and one third. So when we have 
four groups of two sixths, we know that we can have one and two sixths or one and one third to kind of reduce it. We hope that this fraction video helped you to really understand how you can use manipulatives in your classroom to learn how to do multiplication of fractions. It's important to start off with your understanding of what you know about whole numbers in multiplication to help you. In our next video, we're gonna show you how to do multiplication of a fraction times a fraction using our conceptual tools of the pattern blocks. We hope that you visit our website at SIS, the number four teachers.org, and check out our YouTube channel for other tutorials to use in your classroom. Thanks so much for joining us.